life of our founder and first presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph David Williams. One cannot reflect on the history of the progressive churches of our Lord Jesus Christ Incorporated without remembering our founder, Bishop Joseph David Williams. At the request of his wife, Sister Bessie Williams, to come to Columbia to pray for her niece, Sister Helen Washington, who was very ill. The very next day, Sister Washington was healed. And at that time, Bishop Williams' pastor, Bishop Lawson, gave Bishop Williams the approval to come to Columbia and start the Progressive Churches of Our Lord Jesus Christ. In the year of 1944, in the month of June, our bishop, our founder, Bishop Joseph David Williams, conducted the very first service in the home of our second presiding bishop, Bishop Joel Washington. And ever since then, the rest is history. And we are here celebrating 80 years of the Progressive Churches of Our Lord Jesus Christ Incorporated. Given by Bishop Williams, because in my mind, he was the smartest man I'd ever seen, ever right. met. And he taught us the, to be glad to be saved, to, right. to not let anybody look down on you. I, one of the reasons I, I have such a um, passion for knowledge is because people called us ignorant. And he said, you don't have to be, that's your choice. that uh, he allowed me to preach. Uh, sometime I can hear on a Sunday night, he may give us you know, five or 10 minutes, you know, to ex do an exhortation. And uh, I was standing there, I was, I knew Acts 238 back was up forward. And that's what I was gonna preach about. And I was praying about the day of Pentecost. And uh, I was saying on the day of Pentecost, I said, Pentecost me and my mind went blank. I couldn't think of, you know, 50th day, and I just stood there, frozen. And um, he was behind, in front of me, behind me. He just whispered, you know, 50th day. So then I went on to finish off my, uh, wow. yeah, my, wow. my, my, my short message. Uh, convocation was always a part of our lives, and we always look forward to the national convention with all the churches to come together as Bishop Williams has started. Uh, churches as he progressed in his leadership. Uh, there was probably about uh, six or seven churches that he started. And uh, the church would rally together and to to uh, put true holiness. He had a saying, we want to always put true holiness in the forefront. And that God had sent him a seal orders to put true holiness in the forefront. And uh, so we would come together as the churches and we would bond together in Fifth Sunday uh, programs and he would have uh, the teachings of the doctrines in these convocation meetings and uh, teach the pastor's doctrine and we were able to start uh, the women's department, not we but the progressive movement, women's department and uh, women's auxiliary and the youth department and uh, we had good times in the convocations. Uh, fellowshipping, uh, sharing the word, getting to know each other, and also to uh, perpetuate, as they said, put true holes in the forefront. And uh, everybody just had a, a spirit of unity, a spirit of harmony, a spirit of togetherness, and uh, the Lord just blessed. And Bishop Williams had a saying also, if God gonna bless anything, he's gonna bless his word. And so uh, uh, it was an impact on our lives and the lives of our families as we uh, grew together and met other sisters and brothers from other assemblies that uh, we all bonded together and uh, we could go to their churches and sometimes they would have uh, a programs that we would come to and be invited to help build up their churches so we would also work together uh, to upbuild the progressive movement and that's what caused us to be where we are today uh, with the amount of churches we have because of the stand that we took for holiness and uh, and uh, and being coming together in unity and harmony, and and staying under the leadership of the uh, true men of God, as they were built on the foundation that was started by our late Bishop J.D. Wade. Uh, Bishop So I've been going to church every day. Wow. Uh, and Bishop William was a 
part of my life because uh, I got to talk with him many times and he even called me at the house. Really? He had a person to talk to me. <laughs> and so I grew up in the church and there's a lot of stuff that that was instilled within us as we were growing up. Like, He says, uh, the reason God sent you uh, to Germany uh, because he saw that you were seeing more of me than him. And he wanted to separate you from me wow. so that more of your attention can be on him. Wow. Now, a man of his stature with that kind of humility, mm -hmm. you know, to tell that to someone, who he put in the ministry, and yes, I admired him. You know, I, I had a recorder, and I taped every sermon that he preached Sunday morning, wow. Sunday night, Friday. When because at that time, I went to church for uh, six days a week. Yeah, and I taped every service. Wow, and everything that he preached and taught. So I had him. Uh, he was almost like an idol to me, mm -hmm. and it would get to that point, and God recognized that. Wow, and um, so he said, that's why God separated you from me. Wow. So he, you can see more of him and less of me. That's a testimony. It is. Well, Bishop William was a quiet and a meek uh, man who, like I said, had a heart for the young people. Um, and during that time and now, we, we teach confession. So if, you, if you've done anything that's against the will of God, you were taught to confess. So we would go in there, I, I remember the times that um, in school you had to, one of the curriculums was that you had to square dance. Mm -hmm. And some of us did, some of us didn't. <laughs> the ones who did had to go and confess and we would say, I was the one who did. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we went and confessed to Bishop Williams and he would just say, well sister, why did you do it? And you would say something like, well, I don't know. They just asked us to do it. And he always had a calm spirit. You would get loud and, and really, oh, my God, what did I do? You know, and he's just really calming. He's really calming. Always spoke softly. Always had you in mind and what you're going through. So he wasn't rough on you and everything, but he spoke softly, but he was stern in his speaking. So the young people were afraid to go in his office <laughs> to confess because they would just show him that reverence and that respect. But he was just a person that you can uh, talk to and you just didn't want to go and confess or you didn't really want to do anything wrong. <laughs> just a meek and humble young man. you could feel his presence, mm. the presence of God coming in ahead of him. Wow. And all the, the saints would just be quiet. Jesus. They, they would be quiet. He would walk in, praise the Lord. I never, never heard him preach a message like I have to preach, yes. hard and sweaty. Mm. He just stood still and just talked. <laughs> wow. But felt like, to me, like he was cutting you with whatever it was. Oh my it just went to the core. Mm. Of it. Uh, Bishop, <clears throat> well, Bishop Williams, I was a young girl during his tenure, but I do remember a lot of things about him. Okay. He was very soft-spoken, but he could preach the word and bring it across so plain and simple that even a child could understand. Okay. And his favorite thing to say was, to God be all the glory. <laughs> yeah. 
But during our time, our Bishop Joseph Williams, who was our first presider, when we were going to C.A. Johnson, when we needed to talk to someone and have some of those difficult days, he used to sit on the steps. Wow. And we would come during recess or lunchtime and just talk to him. He was a support beam for the young, the young people at that time. And the fellowship of the Progressive Church people meant so much because we went to school together and just the fellowship and the communicating with each other help us through some of those challenging times. Because yes, it's challenging going to church and you know you're safe and what the other kids are doing are not godly. So it's kind of challenging. You don't want to fit in, but you don't want to be an outcast either, but you want to stand for what, what's right to do. So it's good to have a support team, and we had that growing up. Prophesied to me that when we have another church outside of South Carolina, you'll be ready to go. I didn't know what you know that meant in you know, over 10 years when the, uh, the elders at that time who was in charge uh, called me into a meeting and um, told me they wanted me to go to North Carolina, you know, and start a church there. Wow. Yeah. But not only did he tell me uh, uh, in that prophecy for the town I was going to, he also told me who I was going to marry. Wow. Almost 10 years before I married her. Wow. Yeah. He was, uh, uh, he told me in a letter, he said, he said in a letter, I was in Mullins, South Carolina last week. He said, I saw Sister Leggett, that was her last name. Mm -hmm. And then he said, she gonna make some young preacher a good wife one day. Five years later, <laughs> I married her. I was, I was striving as a, as a non-nonsense person who loved people, who would give his last to help somebody. Wow. Uh, he was a walking Bible. Oh, I remember. He would also say, if God would bless anything, he would bless his word. And that was the exhortation mm -hmm. primarily, well, to all of us, but particularly to the preachers. You preach the word. Because if God's going to bless anything, he's going to bless the word. And then last I remember, he said, God will make us the head not and the not tail. the tail. Because, you know, in apostolic years, when people look down on you, they just right. thought you were ignorant and unlearned. And he would always say, no, but if you live holy, God will make you the head and not the tail. Wow. Wow. Always.